Hi. The Logos digital outputs are great for switching loads on and off, but what if you need a load to run at reduced power or transmit an analog value when you only have a digital output? In this video, we'll do a quick review of PWM, we'll have a quick look at the Logo datasheet to understand the relay ratings, and we'll design and simulate a PWM control of a system using an asynchronous pulse generator to control the timing. In PWM, or pulse width modulation, we periodically pulse the load at full power and vary the ratio of the on time to the period time. And this ratio is known as the duty cycle, so that the average output gives the desired result. If we do this quickly enough, the load will behave as though the average voltage or power had been applied. A heating system such as a ring on a cooker hob could be run at 40% power by switching it on at full power for 4 seconds out of every 10. The thermal mass of the pot and food is high enough to smooth out the temperature fluctuations during each period. Logos with transistor output can switch as quickly as the program will allow. See the How Quick is a Logo video linked below for more on that. Logos with relay output will be limited by the response time of the relay and the lifespan due to mechanical wear and any arcing of the contacts. For our demonstration, we're going to use an analog input. The analog chain needs to terminate in something, so we're going to use the analog marker or analog flag here. The analog input will have a range of 0 to 1000 as we adjust the potentiometer on our simulator. The analog amplifier allows us to set the gain of the analog input and to change its measurement range. In our case, we're going to go for 0 to 10 volt will give us a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 2500, which will be 2.5 seconds on our clock. For any displays we use, we're going to use three decimal places on them so that we can read 2.500 for 2,500 milliseconds. I always like to add in a display or a message text. We select the block one, the analog amplifier, take the AX amplified value, add that to our display. And we can see there that it has formatted that with the three decimal places specified on the analog amplifier block. We'll display the same information as a bar graph. We'll set its width to 14, so it takes up nearly the full display. The message text needs a high on the input. It defaults to low, so if we just use the invert connector on the input, it will default to high and be permanently enabled. The message display needs to terminate. We'll use a, a marker for this and we'll use M25 to turn on the white backlight. I've pre-configured the IP address and the project properties. So we'll test that and we get a good result. We say, OK, transfer the program. Now we adjust the potentiometer on our hardware simulated, turn it down to zero. The logo display goes to zero and turn it to maximum. Logo display shows 2.500 seconds. We can do an online test. If we turn on the spectacles, the Online test shows us the same value as displayed on the logo itself. So far, so good. Now we'll add in the timer to be controlled by analog input one. We're going to use the asynchronous pulse generator that will drive our output. And for good measure, we'll add in a flag to control the backlight of the logo and we'll turn it red. We want the asynchronous timer to run continuously, so we'll invert the connector on that, giving it a permanent high. 
we want the timer high levels controlled by the analog input so we connect that up and for now we're just going to set a one second off time on that the on time is determined by the analog input and the off time we'll just set it one second for now download to the plc and go online here we'll observe a problem with our approach as we increase the analog input the pulse on time gets longer as we'd expect but the problem is that when we reach 100 percent on the potentiometer we're not achieving 100 percent on the output the output turns off once every cycle for one second we want it to stay on continuously for 100 percent duty cycle So we'll modify the program further. We need to set the off time to be equal to 2.5 seconds minus the on time. So for that, we'll use the math instruction. It will be 2,500 minus the analog input. We want that on all the time. So we'll enable the input with an invert connector. The mathematical instruction needs to be terminated, so we'll use an analog flag for that. Expand the parameters. Connect up parameter 2 to the analog input. Name the box off time. We'll set V1 to 2500. We'll set the operator to subtraction. And we can see V2 is the analog scale value. We'll set the number of decimal places for message text to three in case we need to use it. And finally, we connect the output of that calculation to the time low input on the PWM asynchronous timer. Download. Go into online monitor, turn on our spectacles for the off time and spectacles for the on time. Go back to our hardware simulator and observe again that we can increase the on time. Notice this time that as the on time goes up, our calculation value is going down from 2500. When we get fully clockwise on the input simulator, we get 100% duty cycle. The output remains on. Job done. Relays are electromechanical, so they have moving parts and contacts which wear. We can extend their life by reducing switching frequency or by reducing switching voltage or switching current. Resistive loads are the least stressful on relay contacts. Capacitors take a surge of charging current as the contacts close. Inductors try and maintain current as the contacts open and these generate high voltages and arcing in the contacts. Alternating current does a zero cross every 10 milliseconds on a 50 hertz supply and every 8.3 milliseconds on 60 hertz. This has the benefit that the arc will naturally extinguish on the next zero cross. DC switching is more destructive because there's no zero cross, the arc lasts longer, and so most relays are derated for DC switching. In the Siemens documentation, section switching capacity service life of the relay outputs we have two graphs the first gives a curve for switching cycles in millions as a function of switching current on resistive loads and a few points stand out the graph maxes out at half a million cycles at two amps on a contact rated at 10 amps at 10 amps the graph suggests a lifespan of less than 50,000 cycles the contacts can switch 10 amp for DC up to 24 volt and AC up to 240 volt. 
For 120 volt DC, the current is derated by a factor of 50 to 0.2 amps. And for 240 volts DC, the limit is half that again at 0.1 amps. The chart implies that at very low current, a lifespan in excess of half a million cycles is possible, but no guarantee is given. Rather confusingly, the chart for inductive loads goes up to 1 million cycles, but it is at much reduced current. There are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, and 365 days in a year. That's about 30 million seconds in a year. If we were to switch the logo relay every 30 seconds, we would do over 1 million cycles in a year. Bear this in mind when designing a control system. Using the logo to switch an external relay generally makes good sense as they reduce the wear and tear on the logo contacts, are cheaper to replace, easier and quicker to replace, and don't require reprogramming. Using transistor outputs where possible solves the problem completely as the moving parts have been eliminated from the logo. For AC applications, the transistors can switch relays or solid state relays. To recap, we had a look at PWM and how we can use it to give analog control using a digital output. We created a control program using analog input, analog amplifier, analog marker, asynchronous timer, output, flags to control the logo backlight, message text with embedded values and bar graph, the mathematical instruction. We reviewed the relay specifications and maximum number of cycles. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave a comment if you think I missed anything or would like to suggest topics for future videos. Bye.